Just a little bit of air bubbles there still. Let's keep on watching. So this is Reclaim Clay. Uh, white, lovely color, lovely clay. Uh, but I'm going to mix this Reclaim Clay with buff stoneware. Not mix it together. I want to make it so that you can actually see the different clay layers and we'll see how it goes. That's looking a lot nicer now. So this is an egg cup that I made that I threw off the hump and I actually accidentally had some streak of the white clay in the stoneware buff that I had. And I glazed this in floating green, came up as having really nice texture. As opposed to this one, another egg cup that I threw off the hump, that was just purely this clay here, the pot edgy white. And it looks so different. So I thought maybe I'll see if I can throw some tumblers for the house, intentionally incorporate the uh, different clay there. But we'll see how it goes. This is also some reclaim buff stoneware that uh, I reclaimed probably maybe last week, maybe the week before. I'm just going to give it a good wedge first before I start measuring it out. And I'm going to use a technique where when you mix a clay, you kind of mix it in little balls of clay before you give it another wedge for each individual tumbler. Okay, let's start measuring. So they say you can mix clay as long as it's uh, the same firing temperature and these two clays are the firing the same firing temperature which is about a thousand degrees celsius so i'm going to just ball make little balls out of all of these so that looks about right four balls of the uh, stoneware buff and six Okay, so to combine them, make sure that it's around both a rounded surface and I'm just going to press them together. That way I can be sure that there's no air, air trapped in the middle and I'm just going to pat them together like that. And then I'm going to take another one and put on the other side. I'm not going to be too... Um, precise about it because I think the randomness is quite nice. I'll put that one on that side and just continue on. I'm just going to give it a little wedge. I don't want to wedge it too much because I don't want to mix the clay too much. I just want to make sure that so it feels like one little piece. And I'll do the same for the rest of the pieces. So here they are ready to go and I've just put little tags there underneath just to remind me which one's which, um, just to keep track of it. I'll see you at the wheel. The first thing I'm going to do is throw, this is actually just plain stoneware, but I, I just need to throw a disc here so that I can stick my MDF boards onto it um, to throw the actual tumblers on it. So let's get started. I throw the oriental or Japanese style where the wheel turns uh, clockwise. Okay. I didn't quite measure 
how big I think it's about 500 grams maybe even more uh, but it doesn't really matter um, how big it is well it does it just has to be a kind of like a, able to cover the base of the MDF board which is 20 centimeters wide so I'm now just coning it up and down Okay, so that looks like it's nice and flat. Now, what I'm going to take is my sponge. I'm going to take off all that slip on the top first. And then I'm going to take a rib tool to scrape off that slip on the top. Because I want it to be quite dry. Just make sure that it's flat so that the bat can, set, can sit level on it. Then I'm going to take my wooden knife tool and I'm just going to make uh, little concentric circles. It just helps with uh, centering the bat later on. Like so. So now that I've got my little pancake uh, to set my MDF bats on, um, I'm going to leave it to dry just a bit. I could take a heat gun and, and just uh, run it over to make sure it's kind of harder, like leather hard. Um, but I'm just going to walk away and um, make myself a cup of tea. We'll see you when we're ready to throw. Okay, so now that this uh, pancake of clay is uh, kind of touch dry, uh, I can stick my MDF bat on it. need to moisten it a bit so that it does uh, stick onto the clay surface and then those circles are useful to uh, kind of make sure that it's roughly in the centered not that it makes a lot of a difference um, but it's just nice and then I'm just moving it backwards and forwards and rotating it just and pressing it down rather than actually it's you know pounding it down like that because uh, uh, this is a tabletop wheel don't really want to uh, put a lot of unnecessary down pressure. Okay, that feels like it's now nice and secure. And then I'm going to trim that left over there um, just to make it a bit tidier. I'm just going to put it over there. That goes in the reclaim bucket later. And I think now we're ready to throw. I'm going to start maybe with the half and half first the half and half ball, which is that one there. Just give it a nice pat. And press it, slam it if you will, in the center. And I'm just pressing it down and rotating it. just to help it stick. So hopefully that is now secure and we can start throwing.
a, a straight wall vessel rather than a curved one for my tumblers. Try just do one more pull maybe. And I think I'm not I'm not gonna try to overdo it. Earlier I took a, another tumbler that I had, just a normal glass tumbler, and measured the width of it and um, used my shrink ruler to find out how wide mine should be. So that actually looks a bit too wide, so I'm going to color it in. And just release my hand slowly. Check it again. That looks right. Maybe just another color in. I'm happy with that. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a sponge to take off all that slip in the middle there because we don't want any liquid to be in the base. Because when it dries, if it's wet, it might crack. Okay, so compressing the rim. I'm going to take a wooden tool and I'm going to hold it on the outside to make sure the walls are nice and flat and straight. Let's see if I can do it this way. And I'm going to just gently push the walls from the inside against the tool. And I believe the walls are nice and straight. And it's quite handy because uh, my wooden tool is the height of the tumbler. So that's good to know. I'm going to compress the rim. And because it's going to be a drinking vessel, I'm also going to pinch it slightly so that it's nice and thin and on the rims too. And I think I'm happy about that. I'm going to just see if I can take off that little bit of shiny liquid in there. That looks good. I'm going to take off the slip on the board and on the side of the board too so that the board doesn't warp and I'm going to take my wooden tool and just run it on the base there so that it gives the channel for the wire to cut through and finally I'm just going to shimmy the rim And I'm quite happy with the look of that. So I'm going to wire it off, but not take it off because I'm going to take it off on the bat. But I'm going to wire it off so that it will come off later easily when it's leather hard. Now take my wooden tool and under there and lift it off. Yeah. I'm quite happy with the look of that, so the trick now is actually to do the rest of it in the same size. I'm going to put it in the table in front of me so I can look at it and just make sure that the next one I do is similar. Take another bat. Okay, so here they are now, uh, six of them. That's the one that's two thirds white and one third buff stoneware. The ones in the middle is the one third white and two thirds buff stoneware. And the one at the end there is the half and half. So now all I need to do is to wait for them to get leather hard so that I can uh, trim the foot rings for it.
Okay, so now that I've trimmed them, uh, you can see the stripy colors there. I trimmed it with this, just a simple foot ring uh, so that uh, it's just a bit beveled there. And I usually like to uh, just keep note of uh, the weight before it was trimmed and then I'll keep track of it as it's drying. So this one is the one third white clay, these two. So you can see a bit of the stripiness coming through. These are the ones that are the, uh, the half and half. So I like that little patterning there. It's um, pretty cool. And this is the one with two thirds of the white and just one third of the buff stoneware. So looking forward to seeing what it looks like. So we'll see you in about two weeks. I really like that patterning there. Kind of looks like an eye. So these now have been bisque fired and I've also sanded them down after that so that it's a nice smooth surface. So I thought what I was going to do was going to dip everything in a floating green to kind of come up with that effect and with the kind of green inside. But because I like these lines so much and I just want to know, um, I just want to maintain it, I thought that what I'll do is I'll dip three in floating green and the other three I'll dip in just a clear glaze and see how that comes out as. Um, so that's the one that had two third of the white, two third of the white and one third of the buff stoneware. And this is the one that's half and half. I really do like that one. So I think I'm, I'm going to glaze this one in just the clear glaze, uh, just in case that pattern doesn't come up in the floating green. And that's the one that has two thirds of the buff stone wear and one third of the white. So I'll get glazing. Okay guys, here they are, out of the glaze kiln. And we have a close up of that one. What is slightly unexpected is that the floating green glaze actually applied quite thick. Maybe I needed to water it down a bit because uh, initially what I had imagined is something like this where it looked like um, that was actually more transparent, even though the inside is kind of like, you know, full floating green. Maybe back then when I was doing the glaze testing that uh, it was more... Uh, watered down and maybe after uh, several uses uh, it became quite thick so maybe I needed to uh, water it down again. Nevertheless, I do like that look. If you have a look at it, you can kind of still see a bit of the uh, marbling in the background. Um, but the ones that I just glazed with clear glaze, I thought they turned out amazing. So this is once again buff stoneware with uh, white clay. And I would love to play, be able to play with colored clay, but maybe another time. Um, the clays that I had was buff stoneware and white, and this is the result when it was on clear glaze. That one is the 50-50, and that one is the um, two-thirds buff stoneware and one-third white. And let me put these aside. And I'm, it's a bit hard to tell which, which one this is because uh, the glaze kind of really did not go too transparent on the floating green. But I still like it. You can still see some of the marbling. And you, of course, can see quite a lot of the marbling on the bottom because I didn't want to glaze it too close to the bottom because I know that floating green tends to run a bit. And I didn't want it to stick on the kiln shelf in the studio. That, by the looks of it, is the one that is two thirds of the buff stoneware and one third of the white. And you can see that nicely there. So that must be, that must be the two thirds white maybe then. There was one, oh yeah, this one here, it, it, uh, didn't kind of, it did drip a bit, uh, but because I kind of left a lot of space there, it didn't stick to the kiln shelf. Now you might, be asking, well, what happened to the other one? Because I was meant to have three of these ones as well. Now, you see, when I was glazing it, I, I wasn't too happy with it. And so I washed it up 
and I didn't take it to the studio to fire in the kiln. However, it is useful to then note the size differences. You can see here the difference in terms of size side by side. So I'll glaze this in a clear glaze and take it next time to the studio to fire. Um, but there you go. Those are my experimentations with the stripy clay. I love it. So I can now get rid of these random tumblers. Might keep those too because they look nice for a cold drink. I've now sanded the bottoms of these, um, like how I showed in my other video, so that they have a nice smooth bottom that doesn't scratch the surface of the table. So tumblers now, I've got some cups, I've got my ramekins for a creme brulee, and I've got uh, some ice cream bowls. On to the next project to replace the dinnerware in the kitchen. I think the next ones would be ramen bowls. Thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon.